Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And, and I didn't realize we were going on air, but go I know. ahead. I sometimes I had a surprise, ZD. You know? She surprised me. Surprise. Surprise. Today, we're going to talk about free motion stitching. I don't want to call it free motion quilting because we'll talk about uh, free motion. Because in... we don't always do it no, to quilt. Not, not we always. do it for other reasons. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but it is, of course, um, a wonderful thing to do for quilting. Um, but free motion... Uh, can be used for all sorts of things. So anyway, free motion stitching is what we're going to be talking about today. And let's start off with telling telling the public, okay, <laughs> what free motion stitching is. What the heck? Because oh, I remember vividly. Let's, t- let's tell the sewing public, let's not t- the public. The public. Yeah. Not, okay. I mean. Also. Yeah. I guess I, I want to say I know a lot of you already know what this is. Okay, <laughs> sorry if that sounded like like I'm assuming you don't know what free motion is. However, I remember that well, no, I was. Some people don't know. No, some people don't. Yeah. But uh, I remember being like 15 years old and learning what free motion was, and you were telling me about this new device that Bernina had come out with. Okay, the Bernina Stitch Regulator, and. You were like, yeah, it's a, it's the, the free motion foot. And I was like, what? And you're like, yeah, you can go backwards and forwards and side to side. And I was like, excuse me. I, I mean, it flew in the face of everything I knew. Well, and that particular thing was also supposed to keep your stitches no, consistent. Know. Right, even, right, and right. So people were doing this right. long before that. Right. But you had never, first, it had never come up in my sewing. I was not a quilter. Right, right. I mean, I... I did free motion, and I would do it to garments or do it for some sort of embellishment, but it was not something. I did not sit down and free motion an entire king-size quilt. Right. Right. But I was like, I mean, my mind was blown, and I was like, show me. Show me what you mean. I was just so excited. Okay. So uh, if if you're unfamiliar, like, let's all get excited together about free motion. So um, you do, uh, with free motion, you can move any which where. With the sewing machine, That's true. right? You can you can back up over yourself, do whatever yep. you want. So you the thing that normally provides you with your stitch formation, uh, there are lots of things that provide it for you, but one of the big things are your feed dogs, right? right? Your feed dogs keep you going in one direction, right, or the other, and <laughs> feed and feed and feed your fabric. Hopefully at some consistent pace. That's right. So, you know, forming like your basic straight stitch, you know, your needle's got to go up and down, but also your feed dogs need to be moving your right. fabric so that right. your needle can go up and down. So that the foot on top mm-hmm. is pr- is pressing down on the fabric, right? Yep. And it sort of has it like, what would you say, pinched between the well, yeah well, how would you what well, pinch this might not be a good word pinch but, isn't uh, but there's well, pressure yeah you know the, when the when the foot when your foot goes down the fabric puts pressure on those feed dogs yep. so that those feed dogs can take those teeth and pull it right right so your needle's just going up and down right but your feed dogs make it so it goes up and down in a different place on the fabric that's right each it time. moves the fabric right right and nowadays we have feed dogs that also move side to side yes to create big multi motion well and stitches. into the four corners also yes yeah. and to move fabric diagonally yes, actually yes, yes so that is something that happens and when you um, and that that's a you know that's another that's just in the last two decades yeah. that has happened that's kind of another ball of wax for home too. machines yes. yes yeah a little little bit of a different thing but when you free motion you drop or disengage however this is you know put forth in your manual you drop those feed dogs you right. you um so they're no longer hugging that fabric nope. and then you are in charge of moving your fabric okay? so now you have become you are the regulator a, yeah, well, you're basically drawing now. You are the feed dog. You are the dog. You are the dog. Feeding. And you are <laughs> you are the artist, and you are drawing with your thread. So uh, most of the time, in order to get a, a nice result from this, you need to use a special foot. 
Okay. Right. There's going to well, be. And for safety reasons also. Yes. You can use no foot. Oh, that's so true. And then there's nothing to stop your little pinky from going under that needle. Also, yeah, okay. So and or, or holding the fabric down, too, because yep. the fabric is going to flag That's, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, called yeah. flagging. So there is something that's sold called a spring needle. Right. So this is kind of, uh, so free motion feet that we're going to talk about oftentimes have a spring on them. Uh, but this needle that is sold, you don't put a presser foot on your machine at all. You take that all that jazz away the ankle and everything and you put this spring needle on and when the needle goes down when the needle bar on your machine goes down into the fabric that spring meets it and hopefully will prevent flagging which means the fabric goes up that's the when needle. the flat right flat when you say the fabric's flagging, it is lifting up and off of you know the bed of the machine yeah. it's not staying down which is what the foot generally does yes. keeps it down on top of those feed dogs. and it's essential because you can then like get things tangled to where your needle's going through the fabric right. multiple times and it's sewn itself right. to the fabric and it's terrible and scary um but we yeah I, i'd say let's let's just go ahead and tell you all to use a foot it's probably not going to be your standard presser foot that's recommended for this that's correct nowadays because you actually here's the other thing you actually do lower your foot. Yeah. Okay. Because you do want your tension disc engaged, holding yes. the top thread. But that foot will not meet the feed dogs and is usually just a little bit higher and off the bed. That's right. So free motion feet, like I said, sometimes they have a spring in them. They can look a lot like your machine embroidery foot, mm -hmm. if that's something that you're... Looks like a little circle, a little yeah, donut. Familiar with. Sometimes a little C, it looks like. But the, uh, the way that your standard presser foot hooks onto your machine and everything, it's actually a little too close, like Mom said, to the bed of the machine for you to be able to move the fabric around freely for free motion. So uh, you will not be as successful if you try to free motion with your standard presser foot. It will, it's not going to be a pretty sight. And I know this because one time I sent somebody home with an embroidery machine after a full I don't know. I spent three hours with this guy. Okay. He had embroidered a yeah. thousand times before. He was embroidering, embroidering, embroidering. Yeah. I don't know what was like, going on. This does not look this right. This is a well-educated man. I mean, we'll say who it is. <laughs> oh, okay. he's the voice at the beginning of our yeah. podcast. He's I kinda, the voice that says it's a sewing out loud. Yeah, I kind of yeah. forget that Frank did That's our intro. Frank. Dr. Frank, he's like, this just, is Just Mallory. don't let him do surgery on you because yeah, he'll you use go. the wrong presser there foot. He's yeah. like, Mallory, this does not look right. You know, and I said, are you using your sewing foot to embroider? He's like, oh my god! I know. He and, was no, so and he had had this machine for a while. It was just a, a, he was, a lapse in his mind. Whatever. He, he was uh, super. It was funny. Yes. It was a funny thing. It, you know, we all make funny. He mistakes. was humiliated. Yeah, it was good. Okay, so anyway, yeah, it's not going to look as good. So you're, uh, you know, when you're free motioning, your needle's just going up and down, and right. you move the fabric. Right. That is how machine embroidery works, right? Uh, when you hook up the m embroidery unit and you put your hooped fabric under there, that embroidery unit is moving. It is programmed to let the needle punch it in yep. specific places. Yes. Um, so when you are drawing, it's like you're moving the paper instead of the pen. Right. Okay. On a home machine. I guess we get into long arm quilters. Yeah, long point. arms, you uh, actually get to move the needle. Different, the different whole, story. <laughs> right. You don't move the fabric, you move the machine. Yes. On your home machine, your regular sewing machine, you move the fabric and not the machine. Now, I have seen people try and move the machine, but go ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so your foot, your feet are special. This is why I just wanted to explain look that. Look how special my feet are. Look, they, your feet are so special. Do they look special? I Every, can point them, flex them. I can do lots with them. Everyone is special. <laughs> uh, and this is where, with free motion feet, I know that there are companies out there that sell, like, universal feet or generic feet. And, like, they might be working fine for you in some instances. Really double check with, like, your dealer or with somebody uh, about what free motion foot you should be using because the height of the foot and the settings of the machine are so important. So two of the free motion feet that we have right here in our hands, uh, what we're holding right now are the echo quilting feet. And they actually, they don't have a spring to them at all. And this is a baby lock foot. 
And this echo quilting foot, uh, what you have to do is you have to take the ankle off of the machine as well as the um, presser foot, okay? And this foot screws on to the presser foot bar, okay? And a lot of times when I was selling machines to people, they'd be like, oh, can I use that echo quilting foot on my, like, is like a lower machine uh, maybe lower in the line. Lower in the means, line, like yeah. the, the Brilliant, which is right. a wonderful freaking machine. But to my knowledge at this point, it actually can't use this foot because all you do when you set that machine to free motion is lower the feed dogs. But on some of the higher end machines, when you say, hey, I'm free motioning, it also electronically adjusts the presser bar. Right. Okay. So, so I've had people come in and... And they will put on a free motion foot onto their machine and think it's going to work, and it's way too tight down. Right. It's so to it the bed does. Of the it it is no longer free. Yes, yes, it doesn't. Right. It doesn't work. It's so too tight do, to the bed of the machine. You really need to know that this is a foot that's right. recommended for your machine. If you have a machine like the Verve, uh, it used to be the Sophia. And you have that embroidery foot, mm-hmm. that machine embroidery foot, that can And sometimes be a used. darning, there's a darning, darning foot, foot that will work. Yes, a darning mm-hmm. foot will work. So actually, uh, you can go that way. However, if you have an embroidery machine that also comes with a free motion foot, make sure to use your embroidery foot, not your free motion foot, because they true. are different. That's true. <laughs> okay, so these feet have springs on them, um, because as you sew, they can hop. A little bit. Right. And they're actually feet called hopping feet um, in the long arm quilter world, okay, where they kind of hop and make sure that the fabric isn't flagging up over the needle, okay? Uh, Some free motion feet, you do need to be careful about. Some of them will have a slot that allows for movement of the needle side to side or for the needle to straight stitch in any position, like all the way to the left, all the way to the right, blah, 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 blah. But there is, uh, there are free motion feet that just have one hole. And it's a tiny little hole, sort of like what you would think on a straight stitch. Yes, it's like, a, it's like mm-hmm. the straight stitch and it And free it's motion. for that reason yeah. to hold it, you know, specifically there and hold that fabric neatly there. And it can be used with that straight stitch plate. So yes. I, I actually really like the look of the baby lock one. It's this itty bitty little foot. It just looks it is, like it's a it tiny. looks like a piece of jewelry. Yeah, it okay, does. it looks like a charm. Yeah, um, and it has that little hole, and it's just very precise. And you can see that if you used it with the straight stitch plate that just has the single hole there, that you'd get so much support around your fabric, three hundred sixty degrees. You know, on top and on bottom. Uh, but don't you move your needle to the left or choose the left right, you oriented can't, you straight can't move stitch. Those needles, I mean, you right. can, but it'll break right. off onto your throat plate. Uh, so you need to choose the foot that's right for your machine. Oh, and then just another little aside, in case you're using a baby lock. Sometimes these free motion feet need an, another little adapter. Okay. And it came with your machine. And you don't have to call your dealer and get mad because this little adapter came with your machine. And you use it for the echo quilting foot. And I believe also for that little single hole. Um, free motion foot. So uh, when when you think of free motion quilting, I think people think a lot of the straight stitch, but you can technically choose any stitch. <laughs> it's just not going to look like right. anything, right? right? So if you choose a zigzag stitch and the needle's moving side to side, you can sort of, as you move it free motion, you get like a calligraphy look, right? Like a, like a, pen nib like on your baby pillow yeah that is well that's all satin stitched though you didn't like move kind of side to side you know what i mean i guess i didn't free motion yeah yeah um so you can get that uh and so you can use a zigzag stitch if you want to you know check that out i think that a teacher we used to bring in karen landuska she would use some of the decorative stitches just to get like a random looking straight you know um, uh, excuse me a random looking free motion pattern that wasn't straight you know it might not be everybody's cup of tea it was more of an art quilting technique but generally you are using a straight stitch and then creating your own shapes when you're doing this um and then we generally use this in kind of personally in non-traditional ways right so how yeah. tell me about how well, you I just want to tell me yeah. what was the year that we made all of those we made the stationary and yeah. then the three pocket thing. Well, 
When was that? That would have been 2008. Yep. Ish. Eight. Nine. 2008, 2009. Uh, one of the, yeah, because it was my second year of college. So Mallory was going to go to Europe for Europe. An extended <laughs> time, and she needed to take, you know, hostess gifts. And what are you going to pack? You have to pack this. Yep. And, you know, you're trying not for it to be heavy and all this and unique, and it had to cross language barriers or whatever, or cultural barriers or whatever. So we made a thing that we called the free motion three pocket bag. bag. Yeah. And it it's like a envelope. So clutch. Like, like a I'd call it an envelope yeah. clutch. And we free motion this fabric and then we do this like origami thing to it and put a button on it and it's got pockets and then we made stationery to go in it. So we packed up, I don't know, six or seven of yeah, these. Yeah, because didn't we? so I was dating this guy who lived in Serbia, and he was studying here. And so then I was going to go visit him over the summer before visiting then another friend and then studying abroad. So I was going to be gone for a long time, and I was bringing these gifts, like, to the families who were hosting me. And uh, so we made, I mean, we made, like, ten we or made something. We you made know, a, I mean, But we made a they lot didn't of. weigh a lot. They nope. were soft. They weren't going to break. You know, and people... Everybody writes. So yes. it worked. And people really like them. And the other thing, so I wanted to talk about that. We're using these in kind of non traditional ways. Right. Okay. We would often free motion over a very textured surface. Mm -hmm. And so this echo quilting free motion foot that I'm holding right now, it kind of looks like a, a saucer. It does. Okay. It looks like a plate, like a saucer. So yeah. we had like fused down like Angelina fibers right. and I had felted stuff and done all this weird stuff and then I went to free motion over right. it and that little itty bitty one hole foot wasn't really appropriate because the fibers could get caught up in that foot or the foot caught up in the fibers. Yeah, this is very good it. at smoothing the, the it's like a surface snow plow. out. Yeah. 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 It like smooths the surface out before you get to it. Yes. So we we um that's another in thing that might influence which foot you're using. Right. There's also an open toe free motion foot. It looks like a C where it's very open so you can really see where you're going, except that would also catch would on all those caught. fibers. Right. So for that project, you know, so that's why you might want some different free motion feet uh, for that. But let's uh, take a little break and come back and talk about some other uses. <laughs> Sadie, what's your favorite way to measure yourself? With my easy check tape measure. So tell me a little bit about this. It's the only way to measure myself, I what? think. Why is it so magical? Well, because there's a slide on it. Uh-huh. You actually snap one end of the tape measure into the back of the slide, and then you fit it to the measurement, and then you can unsnap, and the slide remains on the place that you've measured. So if you're trying to measure your arm. Right. Or your under bust. Right. Or your thigh. Or your head. Or your head. Oh, yeah. The head. Right. Definitely. Well, <laughs> and, you know, measuring yourself is one thing, but even measuring somebody else, what it does is it marks the spot, basically, where the measurement is. And so if I'm, and this happens to you, that you're measuring somebody and they start talking to you and you're like, was that 21 or 23? Oh, my gosh. <gasps> right. And where with this, you know. It, it, the slide has marked it. I also have heard feedback from customers who say, I am sending this to my daughter or, you know, so that she can measure my grandchildren That's and it will right. be accurate. Right. Right? Well, we've actually had trainers, too, yep. that, that bought these, you know, for their customers or they themselves use it for their customers or it was a male trainer and a female client. Uh, he right. didn't have to put his hands on the person right. or whatever. Also, this tape measure, when you use it with a snap, it's impossible to work from the wrong side. That's the other thing yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> you can't measure from the 60 end. You have to measure from, from the, the zero, one end. From the zero, zero end. Yes. Right. right. And I said 60, but... Um, you know, it also has the millimeters on the other side, too. So yeah. you, you've got... Um, you have imperial, imperial and you have metric. Metric, uh, right. And so the easy check tape measure makes it very simple when you are trying to measure yourself uh, and you just don't want to be fumbling around. Well, and I think... You know, the thing is, don't order one. Because if somebody sees it, a husband or right? a daughter or just a friend, I mean, honestly, 
at Christmas time, I would put this like in almost everybody's stocking stuffer. And I think it's a great thing to like send away to college with people, things like that. Where Fabulous. Where you, you want yeah. something measured. Well, if you're interested in your own easy check tape measure, you can see a video on how it works at sewhere.com slash tape measure. And you can check it out for yourself. Sewing out loud. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Talk about kind of the most traditional use of the free motion foot, stippling. Okay. Tell me about stippling. I would say it's when you see something that is quilted, free motion, and it looks like little puzzle pieces together. That's a very, yes, that's a very good okay, description Okay, so it's of a, like it. this little random pattern. And generally, everyone will have a certain character to it. Like, if you get used to seeing someone's, you'll know it's theirs. Yeah. Like like their their humps are the same or their bumps are the same or so I don't know. And it's kind of funny, you, you know. You can do like really tight stippling and do like right. more open little, stippling. And you and, and oftentimes the stippling is maybe done around something else. Yes. So it could be like a background. Like so you've got I don't know, the a printed flower on your quilt or something or a star that you've made out of patchwork or so and you might not stipple it but you would stipple around it to give that like or on the sashing or something look. like that right okay so when i was learning about free motion i didn't have a quilter as a mentor right i had like you know mom me oh just, yeah. had, just had crummy old lady uh so i was just doing whatever the heck i wanted and then we went to like machine training and they were like well of course you don't want your stippling to ever cross over itself. right it can't cross and over blah, That's blah, a, blah. that is not like a big rule no it's a big yeah, pro- it's and a i big was rule. like oh excuse me <laughs> you know and so then we would have like then we had to practice with like a dry erase board of how we'd get ourselves out of <laughs> corners and stuff and I was like well this is not fun um I am not having a good time uh, this is taking all of the fun out of this so I did like a thread painted portrait of Marilyn Monroe uh and uh of course and it didn't look like anybody else's no, people project were like, excuse me you know and so I was just like uh, you know doing whatever the heck so I what wanted. Mallory is talking about we're going from stippling yes. to, to thread painting now yeah. there's something in between which is called like the free motion, like there are feathers, there are flowers. Oh, yeah. So I used to do this Motifs. thing. Motifs. Right. I used to do this thing that it was like two leaves, a swirl, and then a flower, and then the two leaves and the swirl, and then the flower. And I like taught myself this, and I stuck with that for about 10 years. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I can do it in any size you wanted, but ever. But that was like my signature free motion thing was my two leaves, my flower, my swirl, my two leaves, my flower, my swirl. And I repeated that in a random pattern. Mm-hmm. You know, I would, I, w- you, I would go like no, and up and watch- down, and, and I did not cross over. And there are people right. who can just do, they can right. duplicate these these feathers or these stippling. Right. And it is so fun. Fun or to you'll watch. see waves. Yes. I mean, you know, there's a, yes. and there are also stencils that you can uh-huh. use. You can draw on your, you know, your R- your project yeah. first. I mean, there's all kinds of. I mean, like Things I think about the chalking and all that. There's yeah. the chalking, and then there are some of those like rulers that right. go with the free yeah. motion. There's but ruler that you can actually uh, stick like, under your foot and always go for it, which is to me not free me. motion anymore, but it looks like well, free motion. Well, but there's no feedback. It's a guide. Right. Yeah. It's a guide. Okay. You're still moving yes. the fabric. So you go from that to Mallory oh, thread making painting. a portrait yeah, of, of Marilyn Monroe. And Marilyn. that we would call thread painting. Yes. And uh, I also like to do thread painting Okay, for some reason for a while there. And I have these like things that I did I would felt something on the felting machine uh and then I would free motion over it with these like curly cue looking things yeah I was into that too you know and uh I would do do some of it with machine embroidery thread and then some of it with metallic thread I loved free motioning with metallic and this is the other thing with the free motion you can pick your thread yeah yeah so a quilting thread a variegated thread a metallic thread you know, on and on and on. Put them on top of each other right. if you want. You know, so you can do... Two machine embroidery threads, through one needle, all kinds of stuff. When you thread paint, you know, you can start from the ground up or you can 
start with like some kind of quilting collage technique where you're like fusing things or right. a fabric that has a pattern on it and you right. can go off of that. There are just the sky is the limit. Um, but maybe we should talk a little bit about materials now, like needles and threads. Or do you have something else to add before we no, go on? To that? You can go ahead. I can always interrupt. Okay. I, I can't think of anything. Yeah. So if you right it now. you know it all the free motion is such a, a large um you know, you can do so much stuff. You can technically free motion on whatever you want, you, you know. Can. Uh, but you're going to use a needle that's appropriate to your fabric and your thread. And you might find with free motion, since that thread can get pulled any direction, okay, that you might need a slightly larger needle. You usually want a good eye size in the needle. Yes. Yeah, than you needed before. And there right. are quilting needles, and that is one thing that they can help with. They have a, a bit of a larger eye. And so... Um, as you're moving things around, there's a bit more stress on that thread. Right. Uh, and that's part of the technique of learning, too, is how hard to pull and, and you know. Cause that's what we haven't talked it, it's about It's all yet. about, right, it's all about <laughs> the, the speed of the machine and the speed of your hands and the motion of your hands. And, like, you know, it is something you have to practice. Okay, so here's you have the, to practice. Here's the kicker. This is what's hard about it. This is why it is it is a technique that is, you know, sought after right. or you know people work to master it so you are the feed dogs so if you move if you don't have your machine, you are the feed dogs and the embroidery hoop yes you're everything yes. so what people would often strive for is very even stitches right okay so that people would often go too slow with the machine and move the fabric too fast well that gets you big stitches and sometimes broken needles right okay um or they go too fast with the machine too slow with the fabric. That gets you too short of stitches. Right. Uh, and thread buildup, maybe some more broken needles. Uh, so you have to find this kind of like mid, you have to find a rhythm. Right. Okay. You have to find like your driving speed. Yes. And, you know, you got to maintain it. And you have to, uh, you know, you have to set yourself up for a success. So it's best to start practicing free motion on we would make ourselves quilt sandwiches, right? Uh, sometimes or well, those three pocket bags, envelopes yeah, those are, are the great greatest thing. thing in the world because they're just a big square and you then origami them yes. into something. Well, that's definitely going to be a zigzag or live broadcast. So uh, the um, we'd make ourselves quilt sandwiches and work on a small scale. And something you can uh, a product that can help you. I have no idea what it's called now, but we'll figure it out. It used to be called the Supreme Slider. Yeah. Okay. So it was like a Teflon mat you could put on your sewing machine, mm -hmm. an extension table to give yourself a larger area around your sewing machine. Uh, that's always really helpful. Um, and you put that mat down so that your fabric moves freely in every direction. Now, some people also wear gloves, so yeah. like a latex glove or one of those grippy pebble gloves. grippy gloves to hold onto the fabric. I never really needed that. There's also those frames you can sort of buy that yeah. lay on the, um, mm -hmm. you know, so there, there are tools to make this easier or not. Now, the other thing is when you're doing this, you are going... Mallory's talking about a quilt sandwich, and you do need something that's fairly substantial like that. Yep. So if you want to go on something that's thinner or floppier, you may have to put a stabilizer under. Yep, yep. Yeah, sta stabilizer will help. Now, it doesn't particularly have to be a quilt sandwich. No, no, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't have to be a piece of fabric with batting, batting and then another piece of fabric. It can be something else. It can be a piece of canvas that you felted a bunch of stuff on or whatever and put other stuff on it, you know, as long as it can be sort of handled as a piece. Okay, so for a while there in sewing machine land, in sewing machine technology land, there was a big push to get a stitch regulator yes. going on in the home sewing machine. Uh, so I think the first one that came out was that BSR. It was. It I was, believe. I think it was Bernina's. Yeah, yeah the first. Th there were others but they were not like that that actually that stitch regulator actually worked with you it yeah it it had an electric eye that followed the speed sensed, of movement since right. the movement of the fabric right. uh baby lock came out with one uh where 
the the like it had a sensor on right. it, you know, and things like that. So what it's trying to do is sense how fast you are moving the fabric, right, and then adjust to the machine to that, right. Okay, and basically it had like a governor on it. So if you went too fast, it would beep, and a red yep. and a, uh, the light would go off or on or I can't, I can't remember. But flash yeah, at you. It would it would tell you beep beep. You're going too fast, right. so you would know to slow down. Right, and so it would you know attempt to sense the movement of the fabric. And I sit you know um, got to watch our quilting teacher teach a lot of classes on this. And really, what it came down to is she said that if you get enough practice in, and it's not too terribly much practice. But that you could really get it down without needing one of those. I felt like if you, you could let the stitch regulator almost teach you. And then. Right. Yeah. Because it, you know, with that governor on it, it was like, slow down. Zitty, cheek, 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 too fast. Right. So I knew how to free motion before I got that. Yeah. Um, I think it imp- helped me improve a little bit. Yeah. And then, yes. I free motion by myself. So it depends yes. on how long I'm going to free motion, but I will use the foot control on the baby lock to, like, press down like I'm sewing and move my fabric. But then sometimes if I'm doing a larger piece or I'm really in the groove, I will unplug the foot control and just use the start-stop button and put it on, like, high-medium. And I know that I can handle that. So you, you'll find, uh, you know, some different tips out there you know for how to train yourself on this but it's a lot of fun just to try but there are people who really know how to do this oh yeah (laughs) okay Mallory Better and than I, us. Mallory and I <laughs> do this. Is this is like our side, this is, this is, right? It's our it's our it's our side job. Yeah, our, this is our, a fun thing right. that we and so we're not like we are not the people who you'd go to if you want the perfect free motion. We used quilt. to hire someone yes. to teach this. Yes, right. Um, but I always I like doing my little free motion over felt and you know doing my you know fun things with it, my thread painting and stuff like that. It's a nice tool to have in your toolbox. So, uh, yeah, that that is that's good disclaimer, Mom. There are people who really know how to do this. <laughs> they don't call it a side job now. What do they call side it? Side hustle. A side hustle. Yeah. It's it's mainly my side hustle. A side hustle that we don't make any money at. Of course. No, no, not at all. It's just this we, is not something that Mallory could monetize out of me. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I could probably monetize it up to a point by myself, like, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, no. Well, have you seen the people out there on the internet? Well, I mean, that's true. Come on. Never mind. Uh, so, anyway, yes, uh, the, the basics of free motion, you know, are that there's no, there are no feet. That dogs, you're the motion. You know, you're the motion. But getting into this, uh, people would often say, oh, it's good to have a glass of wine. And I have to tell you that. Not for me. Not for me either. No, I need I to be in control. I need to be sober. Yeah. I would get way too flush. Um, Some people <laughs> think chocolate helps them. That was something that, that yes. would go on. Mm-hmm. It was a very, um, a, you know, and some people really love doing it, and some people just hate it. They're just right. like, I'm, I don't want to let loose, or I don't think that this is rewarding enough you know to do but I will say that it once you get into the swing of things it's not it's not too bad I was not as much of a fan of the traced out patterns right no I I just wanted to go loose yeah no it's hard to follow a pattern and everything and you kind of have to figure out how you're going to move this whole thing you know but it is kind of the precursor to uh what a, not the precursor, that's not really the right word, but like this is how machine embroidery used to work. But oh, yeah. this is how we used to we used to free motion machine embroidery. And yeah. what we did is we set a satin stitch on our machine mm-hmm. and then we started moving the fabric. Yes. It was really hard. <laughs> Hard to be accurate. Hard to be, you well, know. Well, you got. I mean, you got good at it. I mean, if you were and, gen- do... and generally, like a, a lot of times on that, you it wasn't uncommon to draw it out first. Yes, you know, and then you painted it. But um, it would. You know, it took a lot. You so, got better at it, but but you were filling in the stitches, too, yeah. so it took a lot. So that's what people now sort of call thread painting. Yes. Okay, now that we a have bit more. the machine I, Thread painting is a very broad thing, I think. Yes. 
Because it's any time, you know, you let loose on that sewing machine and do what you want to do. Uh, there are free motion techniques that capitalize on, like, variegated threads Yes. Or on layering colors. We mm -hmm. were just looking at that Libby Lehman book mm -hmm. called Thread Play. Um, she does kind of this like ribbon work look. And she will layer threads of different colors. But she also, I know somewhere in the book she says this because I remember reading it a long, long, long time ago. But she would like watch the variegated thread come down off yes. the spool. Yes. And She's decide like, where she was going to go. I want yellow on this side and yes. green on that side and yellow oh, on I this remember, side. And I was like, whoa. No, no, no. I remember her saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember her saying that. Now, I know the yellow is coming down. And I'm, I'm like, like oh, you my God. <laughs> Oh, my God, it was gorgeous. No, I yeah. mean, she was, like, super, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, I'll do this little, like, beginner technique you have, and I really like it, and I'm really good at it, and I can make it look good, but I'm not I'm watching not, my thread. I am, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, now, and now the whole thing about, like, variegated thread is that they're dyeing it so that it's not predictable. That's it's right. Like, that's the new right, right. thing, that it's not, uh, it's. Right. It's not red, orange, green, red, yes. orange, green. Yes. It's like blah, 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 like, blah. Oh, yeah. You don't know right. how long of a green it, thing yeah. you're going to get. Right. So uh, it's like Libby, I'm sure, can handle that. I can. Well, actually, I think they make it both ways now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so. sure, sure. But I'm looking over here at these sulky blendables, you know. Right. So I've free motioned with um, – I would recommend free motioning – what do I want to say? I'm looking over at our thread stand here. And we have, like, top stitching thread. Mm -hmm. And you can free motion, of course, with top stitching thread, but you need a big old top stitching needle, and I think it's more challenging. I would recommend that when you were beginning to use a thread that was in similar in color to the surface you were on. <laughs> well, don't go contrasting till you got it down a little bit better. I remember, and then you won't be so disappointed. I remember our quilting teacher too recommending the Floriani machine embroidery mm -hmm, thread right. for. The beginning free she motion really class, it, yeah, because it was a lightweight thread that mm -hmm. was super strong. Yes. So these people, I mean, when I say these people, I mean like me at one point too, were like jerking their fabric around because they didn't know what they're doing at first, and that thread was a little bit more um, forgiving. Whereas if you start with like, I'm looking at the sulky blendables, it's 100% cotton thread. Um, if you go nutso with that, right. and you've uh, jerked it around or something, it is a little more likely to break. You mean when you were in one of those classes where Gina said, well, c feel free to compliment, compliment me. me. <laughs> this is, okay, so that wasn't a free motion class, but no, it, was, it was a quilting class. It was a quilting class, class yes, at the shop. It was a wonderful, what do I want to no, say? No, I was in it too. It was a special day. I, yeah, it What's was a that, special day. A prodigious, uh, uh, like a what I there's a word that I'm I'm losing it right now. A very a very imp auspicious day. Yes. There we go. The feel free to compliment me day. Uh, I shared that with somebody who's completely outside of the sewing universe uh, the other day. I said, so what, I think said, you, what should, you need yeah. to say is feel free to compliment me. And they were like, OK. So Mallory, I think <laughs> you should share it again in case someone doesn't know what that is. OK, well, just in case you're out of the loop. Um, well, you might might not. Have, they might not be listening to the podcast That's out right. of order this or whatever or not know the history of feel free to compliment me uh one time we were in class and gina was an employee of like a part-time employee she you know she'd work sometimes and uh she, she was our like tuesday woman yeah she yeah. used to be like a stay-at-home mom and her kids were getting older and she was sewing and so then she was uh you know in the shop for a few hours every week and she was in class with our quilting teacher and i hear our quilting teacher giving her um instruction and then she's like okay well just feel free to compliment me at any time is what i hear and i'm like what did you just say and she you know i was like did you just tell linda to feel free to compliment you at any time and she was like no no i said feel free to correct me but we took it from there and there's an enamel pin there was wine yes, at this class i was. believe gina does like wine and maybe she did say feel free to compliment and me. She just didn't I don't remember. Know. Yeah, uh, but that is uh, yeah. It's a it's a hashtag FFTCM. So ever since uh, then, yes, it's like feel free to compliment me. Feel free me. to compliment me. Feel free. So to you can post me. anything on sewhere.com or the um, self sewn wardrobe, and you can say you know here's my blouse, here's my project, here's my and feel free to compliment me. Hashtag. That's right. FFTCM. Yeah. And and then we'll compliment you and. Like we said on the last podcast, 
We will not give unsolicited feedback. That's we will right. just compliment no, we'll only you. Because sometimes you. all you want are compliments, and That's that right. is fine. Okay, that is a okay. I I only want compliments most of the time. <laughs> all right, I don't want to hear it. Okay, so with free motion though, uh, so slightly bigger needle than you yes. normally have and do yes or even start and start off, out with the thread you know that's going to be the easiest the for most you forgiving. right you could even start out with construction like the metrazine yeah um it's not as pretty right as the i would say the polyester floriani um, the, the floriani is good was really nice it was really affordable and it was on a, a cone yeah not a huge cone but it was like a lot of thread to right. play with right whereas the thicker cotton thread you know, there just weren't as many. Right. Well, and the cotton drag thread really does drag more in the needle. No, you get it does. you get more breakage yeah. with it. You yeah. do. You do. Um, for sure. So uh yeah, those I'll I'll post a picture of the journal that I like made myself <clears throat> with the felted stuff because I just found it the other day. So uh, that was my my kick on the felting and the free motioning. All right. Well, like we said, there are people who People who actually know how to do this. <laughs> and we'll try to link to a few of them. We think that you should give it a shot. Maybe if you're looking for a little something to fill your days. Uh, you can get to us on Instagram. We're at SoHereCom. ZD, take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SoHere.com.